Hello everyone, welcome back to the latest lecture session. A quick recap of what we have been up to. We have been discussing the relevant aspects of biological treatment, right? In that context, we looked at different kinds of biological treatment and what are the different compounds or the process that are relevant. For example, we know that organics or organic BOD or BOD needs to be removed. We looked at nitrification and denitrification. We looked at phosphorus removal. These are the four major processes typically that we are concerned with. In that context, we started looking at activated sludge process. In that context, we looked at you know how do microbes grow or what are the equations that can help me understand how these uh, microbes grow, what are the rates of microbial growth, right? So, we looked at that and we looked at two cases when the food or our waste or the substrate is high, when it is low, so on and so forth, we looked at that, right? So, we will uh, have a quick recap of those aspects too. But in the context of what we are going to discuss today, I need to uh, I guess refresh your memory regarding some aspects. We are going to understand how to analyze or design the activated sludge process or for that matter any process, any biological process let us say. We are going to use some terms which we are going to look at, fine. But as discussed in the initial what do we say lectures of this course, we saw that when we are analyzing any process or unit process where you know different compounds come in along with some flows, they leave along with some flows and you know they are being transformed within some uh, or due to some reactions let us say, right. How do we analyze this system? How do I design such systems let us say? How do I make sense of it? So, to be able to make sense of it, we understood that or we applied the principle of mass balance, right. So, mass coming in, mass going out and mass being transformed. So, these three aspects will give us an idea about whether the compound is accumulating within the reactor per time or with time or it is decreasing with time let us say, right. So, let us uh, consider these aspects again uh, ladies and gentlemen the key aspect is mass balance, right. So, you will use that throughout environmental engineering and certainly in water and wastewater treatment. So, thus we already discussed the uh, three kinds of ideal reactors and applied the mass balance earlier in the course, right. So, we will use those principles here. Again, we are going to look at some derivations. In general, we do not go into detailed derivations, right, because this is an UG course, pardon me. But here we are going to look at the derivations in some detail, but again, these are not complex derivations. It is just mass balance, mass coming in, mass going out and mass being transformed inside the reactor. Why do we need to look at these derivations? Because many plant operators or many people out there let us say do not look at the underlying assumptions before applying the formula. And obviously, as is the case with any formula you are going to have different assumptions out there. So, without un, uh, understanding the underlying aspects if you apply the formula right you will face one stumbling block after the other. So, in this particular aspect which is crucial to biological treatment and thus to wastewater treatment, we are going to look at mass balance in understanding how things work and then uh, to help us design the relevant systems let us say, right. Let us uh, move on here. So, analysis. So, I know that I have my head works or preliminary treatment, right and then my primary treatment where I am removing the let us say preliminary treatment primary treatment, right. And now here I removed some BOD may be 30 percent, 35 percent, right or less than 35 percent BOD removal, Maybe 70, 65 percent suspended solids were removed, right, uh, Maybe 70 or 65 percent. So, here you are still left with a considerable organic content which is dissolved primarily and you want to remove that. So, how do we remove that? As mentioned, we are going to use microbes and we are going to provide oxygen. So, that you know the microbes use their enzymes or catalyze this particular degradation of our waste or their food with the relevant enzymes, right. And you are going to fasten or improve the kinetics. Again, we saw that microbes use the uh, compounds or our waste for two uh, processes. One is for energy generation, one is for cell synthesis. And the electron acceptor in uh, the overall reaction if I may say so is oxygen let us say. So, that is one aspect to keep in mind. So, what happens here in this biological process you know that you have to give oxygen input right there is not a oxygen enough oxygen in the wastewater obviously 
and you are going to have the microbes out here and they are going to while using or consuming oxygen degrade your waste or their food which is the substrate. And then the kind of microbes that are going to be formed they can be settled down and removed from the system. If not you will have issues with microbes or high microbial concentration and again organics leaving the system. So, the supernatant will be clear and here let us say this is the water let us say the supernatant will be clear while the flocks, flock forming microorganisms which are relatively heavier they are going to settle down. So, these we will send to treatment again why because again organic content cells right again cells uh, organic content you cannot just throw it out there it is going to lead to relevant issues septic issues certainly. So, you are going to have to stabilize it or degrade it right into more stable compounds, but we do not always waste it. For example, this is the waste we do not always waste it why is that here in our sewage or in our waste we have some microorganisms, but the kind of microorganisms that lead to the degradation of our waste are not typically uh, present. What microorganisms are present here? We do have microorganisms coming in, but they are enteric microorganisms which are not uh, going to assist in degrading our waste. So, where will the source of microorganisms within this aeration tank? Why aeration? Because I am providing air and uh, which will contain oxygen. So, I am going to recycle part of this sludge which has settled down right that is thus it is called the activated sludge process. Depending on the need some of it will be wasted right and here I am going to get my treated water. So, that is the process and we are just applying this or going to look at this part of the system today right. So, this part of the system we are looking at it today and where do we see that here we see the figure out here. So, this is the aeration tank aeration tank this I guess is a poor figure, but again you understand the typical uh, shape that you want right. And here you have what do we say the which you here you have the secondary clarifier, secondary clarifier or secondary sedimentation tank right, where you separate the sludge or the microorganisms from your uh, waste water let us say right, which is easy to do because they are not dissolved obviously. So, the settled sludge is either going out as waste or is recycled back into our aeration tank. So, that you provide or we have enough microbial concentration inside the tank. If the concentration of microbes is too less obviously, the kinetics or the rate at which these uh, microorganisms can degrade the relevant uh, waste water is going to be very slow. If it is very slow then you need a huge volume of tank which is not feasible. So, these are some aspects let us just understand the variables. So, I guess subscript O indicates influent sometimes we have write it as N at least I write that right and uh, subscript R indicates recycle as on this is from the recycle flow recycle and W indicates wastage what is going out in the wastage. So, let us just understand this a uh, waste water with a flow rate of Q which has R waste at an initial concentration of S naught or S in S stands for substrate R waste organic compounds let us see right which need to be degraded. X naught stands for the initial concentration of microbes. In general uh, depending on the type of uh, waste water X naught is typically 0 though there might be microbes they are not the microbes which will lead to degradation of waste. So, this is a pretty good assumption. So, X naught is typically 0 ok this is the concentration of microbes coming in along with the waste water. So, what is happening here inside the tank we have substrate, uh, microbial concentration and volume of the tank these are the variables that we are concerned with we will look at other variables too. So, here we see that now the flow rate is not just Q it is Q plus QR why is that we know that some of the settled sludge right which is the microorganisms are going to be recycled back. Why is that? Because you need a high concentration of microbes that is why. So, Q recycle or the rate of uh, recycle flow is QR that is why we have a flow of Q plus QR here and concentration S and concentration X out here of the microbes. They go to the secondary clarifier right here again here there are little to no reactions occurring why is that? 
are we providing any oxygen here? No, we are not first turbulence that will not meet the purpose whatever oxygen is required we are providing that right here. So, there is no oxygen being provided out here. So, the assumption which typically holds good is that the substrate whatever is coming in will not be degraded in the secondary clarifier. We are only removing the sludge or the microorganisms or changing phase let us say right. They were earlier suspended in the water the microorganisms and this flock forming uh, what do we say microbes they are going to settle down that is what is going to happen here. And part of the sludge is going to be wasted sent for stabilization or recycle to increase the microbial concentration. And obviously, Q minus uh, QW is uh, what we have out here let us see right. So, I should not have just uh, said Q minus QW, but that is fine we will look at right Q minus QW is the right uh, answer out there ok. So, this is the system let us understand how to analyze this some terms which I already mentioned Q flow rate right coming into the tank. So, it is volume per time let us see volume per time. So, microorganism concentration entering the tank. So, MLVSS different ways to uh, measure we will look at that later microorganism concentration coming into the tank. Sometimes I use X naught sometimes X n ok volume of aeration tank ok again volume of aeration tank not of the secondary clarifier. Why is that why are we not really looking at that because we are assuming that there are no reactions occurring within the secondary clarifier because we are not providing any oxygen to the or in to the system in the secondary clarifier right. And without oxygen you would not be able to or the microorganisms will not be able to degrade the relevant waste or the substrate. Mu right specific growth rate constant or maximum specific growth rate constant which will give us an idea about the microbial growth right we will look at that again later. S is the waste or waste and food for the microbes which is referred to as substrate. Yes, X again depending on where we use it, uh, it is the concentration of microbes. Ks is the half velocity constant which we came across when we said uh, looked at this mono equation mu is equal to mu max into S by Ks plus yes, right. So, this is what we have we will look at this again later or it is typically going to be equal to one half the maximum uh, growth rate soluble BOD5 concentration not equal to one half the maximum growth rate that uh, Ks is equal to the soluble BOD5 concentration that gives uh, half the maximum growth rate right. And what else decay rate of decay because microbes are going to uh, decay or degrade wastewater flow containing the microorganisms that needs to be wasted this will depend upon the mass balance concentration of X in the effluent from the secondary tank and concentration of microbes in the sludge that is being wasted or recycled out here right these are the general terms. Let us move on here we need to understand two aspects until now we have looked at theta or TR let us say right different people use different variables I typically uh, go with theta. Uh, with theta uh, what is theta now it is the hydraulic retention time hydraulic retention time. So, it is theta is equal to V by Q right. So, it is equal to volume of your particular system by flow rate Q is flow rate flow rate is volume per time let us say right. So, it is at time, but it is not as if time in the general sense this gives you an idea about theta hydraulic retention time will give you an idea about how much time this particular water molecule or those compounds coming in with the water, uh, water molecule will spend in your reactor that is the hydraulic retention time. But here we have a new uh, variable solid retention time which we are going to refer to as theta c. What is this now? Let us look at that. So, here is my aeration tank water is coming in water is going out let us say I know the q I know the v I can calculate the theta of the compounds in the water or of water theta equal to v by q. But here in this particular uh, process actuated sludge process the system is not as simple as this you know that from the sludge that has settled out we are bringing in some uh, microorganisms. So, as you can see here the key aspect is depend upon how much microbes are present or how much time the microbes are spending in this particular reactor let us see. So, it depends on QR 
again QR is a factor let us look at that later. So, here we are not just looking at how much time the water is spending in the system, but we are also concerned with how much time your particular microorganisms or which uh, in layman's terms are referred to as solids here are spending in the system right. How much time the microorganisms are spending in the system theta c right. Again that typically increases because the we have this recycle flow. For example, if there is no recycle flow and it is just this then theta will be equal to theta c right. But in this case obviously theta is not equal to theta c why is it because the sludge is being recycled within the system while some will leave the system from effluent or from wastage. So, in general you know theta c will be greater than or much greater than theta let us see why is it again you want to have the microbes spend more time in the system right so that they degrade the relevant uh, waste water. So, these aspects we need to be uh, clear about let us move on to the next aspect okay. So, as I mentioned we are going to look at material balance before I look at material balance let us understand the system. We have this water coming in water going out and this is the symbol that I am going to use for mixing while providing oxygen and then I am going to have this recycle out here right recycle and wastage and the treated water will go out through here right. So, here if I look at this particular system out here let us see right if I look at this system right the aeration tank system what do I see I see that flow is coming in and is bringing waste in meaning mass is coming in and flow is going out along with some waste let us see. So, mass is going out and reactions are occurring in the system due to the microbes. So, mass coming in mass going out and reactions occurring. So, again how are we going to analyze the system by applying mass balance. So, here how do I analyze the system is it a batch system as in is it a closed system no because mass is coming in and mass is going out. Is it a plug flow reactor? Well, with plug flow reactor the concentration of the compound of concern within the reactor is not the same throughout the reactor, but here with continuous mixing and the assumption is that uh, we are mixing it homogeneously we are assuming that the concentration is same within the reactor. So, it is not a plug flow reactor. So, what is the next aspect mass is coming in mass is going out reactions are occurring and more importantly it is completely mixed. So, it is we are assuming it is a completely mixed flow reactor or continuously stirred tank reactor right. So, we will apply the mass balance for this particular uh, system considering the system to be a CSTR or completely mixed flow reactor. What is the fundamental mass balance equation ok not fundamental the macroscopic mass balance equation. So, this is the accumulation term how is the mass within the system changing right. If dc by dt is positive yes it is increasing or accumulating if it is negative it is decreasing will be depend upon mass coming in q in c in minus mass going out q out c out plus volume into rate of formation minus rate of loss of the compound let us see right or thus I can replace by r net. So, this is the mass balance equation we are going to use and apply throughout this particular uh, what do we say session let us say at least for waste water. So, let us see you know what are some of the aspects we need to be concerned about. As we discuss we need to get the theta we need to get the theta c how much time do I need to let my water stay in the system how much time do I need to let my microorganism stay in the system what should be the volume of the relevant system if my yes in the effluent or waste in the effluent is 10 milligram per liter I think that is our uh, new standards I think we looked at the standards is not it. So, how do I you know go about designing these particular uh, variables let us see. So, we are going to apply material balance obviously as we mentioned it is for a completely mixed aeration basin let us see. So, we are assuming that it is a steady state which is not a great assumption, but we are looking at the long term what we see analysis. So, steady state in that context is a decent assumption. What are we applying the mass balance on? We are applying it on the biomass or the microorganisms which we are referring to as the volatile solids because that is how we measure that ok. Volatile suspended solids we looked at a, a, what do we say a graph or a flow chart where we looked at suspended solids, dissolved solids and so on and so forth. Here we are uh, looking at volatile, suspe volatile suspended solids here let us see. 
and what is the control volume it is around the entire system. Why the entire system as in I know that this is my aeration tank and this is my secondary clarifier where the sludge is being settled down and the supernatant is going out let us see. Why cannot I just apply the mass balance out here along this or around this green colored control volume let us see. Well, in that case what is going to happen is I will have an additional variable as in the skew recycle also will come into play. So, that will add to some complexity or unnecessary complexity. So, to make it simpler if I choose my particular control volume to be this right this is my control volume right obviously I need to see to it that. So, this is wastage. So, what is it that I am just concerned about mass coming into the system mass going out of the system and mass being wasted from the system. So, these are the three aspects and I do not really care what is happening within the system other than the reactions whatever flows coming uh, I mean recycle flows inside the system I am not really concerned with it. So, this is my control volume which we just uh, defined right and uh, here we are applying the cons what is it um, steady state mass balance on the biomass or x. So, what is the mass balance we looked at the equation this is the mass balance right. So, at steady state obviously this term is 0. Now, let us apply the other uh, what do we say variables out here. So, dc by dt is 0 what is the concentration of the relevant uh, or what is the mass coming into the system of the biomass it is q into x in let us say x in right and what is the how is the mass leaving the system this is how the mass came in q comma x in right mass of biomass or the uh, microorganisms and how is it going out some will leave through here q minus q w and x effluent comma x effluent and here it is q wastage comma x recycle let us say right. So, it is leave mass is leaving the system via two means. So, minus because it is leaving the system and one is q minus q w into x effluent plus how else is it leaving the system q w into x r that is how it is leaving the system. Are there any reactions uh, occurring that can what do we say change the system or you know affect the microorganism uh, concentration in the system yes we know that microorganisms are consuming food uh, what do we say and then uh, cell synthesis reproduction and so on and so forth uh, or growth let us say I should not use the term reproduction and also they are dying too there is a decay too. So, yes there is uh, what do we say or reactions are occurring that will affect your microbes. So, that is what I have out here let us say right. So, let us see what else I can do out here x in as I mentioned x in uh, little to no microbial concentration of use to us in the context of wastewater treatment comes in. So, I can assume that x in is equal to 0 right. So, now what will I have I can uh, calculate r x which is r net x I guess r net x is equal to q minus q w into x e plus q w into x r by volume. Again we are not going to mug it up all the equations uh, general equations that are necessary will be given, but obviously I am talking about the exam here the equations will be provided, but you need to obviously be able to understand what are the assumptions behind uh, what do we say coming up with that particular equation why because we will ask questions or we have to analyze systems where the assumptions are not valid and that is when you need to be pretty thorough let us see. So, this is what we have right this is what I have out here right let us keep this in mind let us say equation 1 let us say this is r x net right and let us see and material balance for completely mixed aeration basin here let us say I want to look at the solids retention time. And what is the solids retention time let us say right theta c right theta c how do I get that you know earlier we were looking at uh, what is it volume by flow rate and such. But here it is nothing but mass by mass being removed per time right this is the mass of microbes or mass of the solids by mass of solids being removed per time right 
at steady state removal rate equal to production rate fine. So, theta c in general terms is mass of the solids or the microbes in the system by the rate at which the what do we say microbes are being removed let us say. So, how can I uh, put that in or such? Uh, what is the mass of the microbes in the system let us say? I know that the volume of my system is V, this is V is of the aeration tank and let us say it is by uh, concentration of the microbes is X, this is within the system right, the entire system for which we defined the control volume earlier. How is it being removed? I know that mass is coming in, X is coming in via the influent, X is going out via the effluent and some via the wastage right, how is it being removed? So, it is Q minus Q W into X effluent plus what else is, how is it leaving the system by Q wastage into X R right. So, that is what I have out there is not it. So, you can uh, look at what I have out here R X net is this and we have uh, what is this theta C to be this. So, let us try to combine those two uh, what do we say aspects. Okay, before I uh, go further, what does it uh, you know? Let us look at this under uh, system and try to understand that. Okay. So, suspended solid at steady state removal rate equal to production rate, right? So, this links the solid retention time with the inverse of biomass produced, right? Biomass produced per time per amount of biomass. For example, this can also be written as mass in system by mass removal rate and mass production rate, right. So, theta c ma when I say mass it is of the microbes, please keep that in mind when I say c theta c cell retention time or solids retention time. So, theta c is giving me an idea about mass production produced or biomass produced per time per the amount of biomass in the system let us see right. And then combining this with equation 1 which we had earlier what do we see R s is equal to x by theta c I guess it should be R x if I am not wrong. So, this should be R x net and combining equation 1 with the equation for theta c this is what we get R x equal to x by theta c. Again these are aspects we are going to use later let us keep this aside fine. Let us move on. So, now what are we going to apply the mass balance on substrate not substrate pardon me suspended solids <laughs> steady state on the substrate around the entire system. Earlier we applied the mass balance on X which is the microbial uh, concentration or the biomass. Now we are going to apply it on our waste or the substrate right. Again what is the system? The system is the entire system which includes both the aeration tank and the secondary clarification tank. So, I am not concerned with the recycle flow, I am only concerned with mass coming in, mass going out let us see right. So, let us just plug this in again it is a CSTR that is the assumption. Here again we are assuming that the uh, reaction is only taking place in the aeration tank, it is not taking place in the clarifier. That is a good enough assumption because oxygen is only being provided here and no oxygen is being provided in the secondary clarifier. So, when we take the volume effectively we need to take the volume of the aeration tank only that is something to keep in mind. So, let us uh, get on with it. So, we have mass uh, V d c by d t pardon me because it is at steady state that is equal to 0 that is equal to the waste coming in. So, I know it is Q is the uh, what do we say flow of waste water coming in S naught is the substrate coming in this is S effluent or S let us say S here let us say right. We are assuming the same uh, effluent substrate will leave via Q minus Q W and Q W let us say right. So, how is the uh, substrate or the waste leaving the system? It is leaving via Q minus Q W into S that is what is happening out here. This is the treated waste water and some is leaving along with the sludge let us say right sum is leaving along with the sludge right and what else we know that there are going to be reactions occurring. So, I will say plus V into R net of substrate right. So, that is something uh, we have out here. 
let us just try to analyze this system. As you can see Q minus QWS plus QWS they are going to cancel out right. So, let us simplify this 0 equal to Q S naught minus what am I left with Q into S that is what I have out here plus V into R net of S. Therefore, R net of S it will be equal to the negative of minus of Q by V S naught minus S and Q by V or V by Q as you know is theta hydraulic retention time right hydraulic retention time. So, that is equal to minus of S naught minus S by theta. So, what does this S uh, not S part me negative tell me what does that tell me right it is uh, negative here it tells me that the net rate of waste or the substrate uh, is negative. So, that means the substrate is being decreased that is what it means R net being negative means it is being uh, removed. So, this is let us say equation 2 or equation 3 uh, let us not keep track here. So, that is what uh, we have out here right. So, let us uh, move on. So, steady state and such so this is negative out here right. So, if you have or would have analyzed the system without the recycle right. For example, we know that the system that we are considering has recycle here let us see, but we are applying the mass balance around the whole system right. Because of the way we are taking the control volume what is happening within the system is not of concern. So, if you look at it R s right uh, is more or less same as the one for the system without recycle that is what we have. Substrate balance is the same biomass balance differs only in substitution, but again keep in mind R s this thing will be the same, but if I am applying it on x that will be affected let us see right. So, that we can uh, what do we say look at it because there we have theta c right. So, that is one aspect to keep in mind let us uh, move on. So, what do we have here we have material balance for completely mixed aeration basin to get at the variables of interest as in I need to be able to calculate S effluent, I need to be able to calculate the volume of the tank theta, theta c I need to you know uh, look at these aspects further. So, what is it that we are asking here or going to do kinetic, equi kinetic equation for biomass growth ok. In this context I just need to what do we say refresh your memory with respect to what we discussed earlier. In general if A goes to products what is the rate of this reaction? right it is going to be equal to a rate constant times the concentration of A right. So, here I am concerned about the biomass microbial growth uh, in general not a chemical not general in general in general it is not a chemical reaction, but let us say here I have x which is the microbial growth which is increasing and the rate constant is uh, mu let us say think of it let us say, but where do we get this mu we get it from the mono kinetics or mono equation let us see and how did this equation come out ok uh, let me not say how what is it equal to mu specific biomass growth rate let us see right is equal to mu max into s by k s plus s and how if I plot this mu versus s what is this going to look like obviously something like this and this is the mu max right and when s uh, or what do we have here k s is when it is equal to mu max by 2 that is when we have k s let us say. So, one aspect we discussed earlier was that if s is very high what will that be s is far greater than k s or s is very very high then uh, you know s is far greater than k s s s cancel out. So, mu will be equal to mu max right and if s is far less than k s what is it that will it will turn out to be mu is equal to mu max into s by k s why is this relevant we will just look at that. So, here I need to know rate of production of my microbes. So, that will be equal to so, if I can say in similar terms the specific growth rate let us say into the concentration of the microbes right. So, if mu is such that or in the case where s is very high 
you will have mu max into x right meaning the rate of production of the microbes is just dependent upon the concentration of the microbes that is it. This is the case when S is very high, but the other case when S is very low especially compared to Ks what will that turn out to be rate of production of x will turn out to be equal to what now uh, mu max into S by Ks into x meaning it the microbial growth rate right will not just depend on the microbe concentration, but it will depend upon the amount of food available to that that is the case when the substrate is low. So, these are the aspects we need to uh, keep in mind, but again rate of production is what we have here. So, R net of x let us say is equal to rate of production of x minus rate of loss of x let us say and I know that uh, what is this uh, rate of production of x right this is what I have is equal to mu x minus rate of loss of x that will be depend upon the decay constant which we discussed earlier into x right. And what is this R x did we uh, look at this or get this earlier I think we did. So, let us uh, substitute relevant uh, variables out here. So, what do we have R x net is equal to mu times x minus k d times x what is this rate of loss rate of loss of x meaning uh, death of microbes and rate of production of microbes right. How are the microbes being produced by taking the food or the substrate let us say right. So, uh, but did we calculate R x earlier I think we did let us go back and look at that equation earlier ok R x net equal to x by theta c. So, x by theta c is equal to I will take x common out here x common term out here what is mu we know that mu is equal to mu max into s by k s plus s and this is minus k d. So, from here I can rearrange and solve and get this s right. So, uh, that will give me one of the uh, variables of interest again what is this uh, s here right what is the S? S is the concentration of substrate within my particular aeration tank right which is more or less the same as what is going out let us say right. So, this is depend not on theta please note that it is not depend upon hydraulic retention time. So, the concentration of the waste or the BOD in the waste treated waste water is not depend upon theta, but it is depend upon theta C let us say right. So, that is something to keep in mind as in it depends on how long are you storing your microbes in your particular system let us say right. So, I guess we have more aspects, but I am uh, I believe I overshot my uh, particular uh, time limit. So, we will continue this in the next uh, session, but one aspect to note is that you know I am just playing around with variables, but we need to understand these underlying variables in terms of the mass balance why because most of the assumptions we use to look at the relevant equations are not going to be typically valid. So, only if you know the mass balance and how to apply it will you be able to play around with the variables pretty easily and get at the relevant variables let us say. So, with that I will uh, end today's session.